Okay, here's a wrecked car. Next panel, here's a wrecked car. Next panel, here's a wrecked car. Last panel, here's Hawkeye underneath the wrecked car. Then you go to the next page. Here's Hawkeye squeezing out of the wrecked car. You know, and stuff going on and on like that. You know what I mean? It's been, you're it's right. Minutia and he can. Right, you know. Yeah. You're so right about that. Yeah, oh, but um, um, the thing I wanted to say in, in terms of Falcon, because um, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, you know, kind of dig on him. Um, and I don't hate the character. Uh -huh. um, it, it's, it's just, it's just, I come from, you know, just knowing the history somewhat. Uh-huh. Um, and right off the bat, when he first gets his wings, mm -hmm. um, not too long after that, what does he have to do um, in order to fly? He shimmies up a light pole. What other character with flight shimmies up a light pole? I'm sure. I'm sure. Even if Moon Knight had to do it, he would find a way that he would be atop a roof or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm, I, I, even 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 as a kid, I was thinking, okay. really, really, Marvel, really. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh my god. And then fast fast forward a few years, or well, more than a few years, uh, where he's. Um, I guess he technically he's an Avenger, uh -huh. um, and this is when John Byrne was drawing it, right? And um, he was feeling left out. I don't know who's I don't know who the writer who needs his ass kicked for this one, but um, 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 there's a scene. I think they're in the Avengers Quinjet, and right. they're 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 calculating what their next move needs to be against um, Villain X. Okay, and, and um, the Falcon. He showed a falcon sitting in the background saying to himself, Oh, I guess nobody wants to uh um, um put a get put together a plan with the token. Dude I'm like, I had I had oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, once again, really Marvel? <laughs> I mean I, I'm a, I I know I know what the times were, but right. still, you know, that that was that, that was just ridiculous. That was just sickness. I had all those comics. I had all those comics, and I and, and you said I know exactly the story you're talking about. I know the story that came before it and what came right after it, and I can tell you who the writers were. Mm -hmm. I the whole thing was okay. Just to go back, it was like okay, all right. Uh, the Avengers, even right before that, okay. What had happened was, you know, they had their big cosmic. I don't know if you remember that Corvax stuff. Um, somewhat, somewhat. Okay, this is like right after the Corvax stuff, and there's like 50 Avengers hanging around the mansion or whatever. And you remember the the Peter Guyrich character, right? Yeah, everybody hated him. Right, right, because he was like their their government liaison, right? Mm -hmm. He was always on their case about, yeah, you superheroes, you think you're tough, you don't know crap. Uh, you're you're causing problems. You're a threat to national security, and so on and so forth. So anyway, basically he comes in and says, "Listen, you've got all these people here. All these people have to leave. There can only be six Avengers on the team at a time, right?" Mm -hmm. He says, "Okay, your team is going to be this person, this person, this person, this person, and the Falcon." And they're like, "What? The Falcon?" And he's like, "Well, yes. You know, if you're going to be sponsored by the government, then you have to adhere to our affirmative action." Uh, uh, regulations, and since the Black Panther has to go home and 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 go on his adventures, uh, you need a black person in here. So we're gonna put the Falcon on. And the way the story went was everybody was like, you know, uh, who who are these, this government person telling us what to do? You know, la di da. Except for Captain America, the only person who thought it was a cool idea was Captain America because, of course, you know, the Falcon was his buddy or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then. You know, Cap goes to the Falcon. He says, hey, you know, we're going to make you Avengers. Isn't that cool? We're going to be on the same team. And the Falcon is like, I don't want to be on the Avengers. You know, you, you know, you just want me to be your token. I'm not going to join the team. And mm -hmm. basically, Steve Rogers more or less talks him into it. Okay. Now, those stories were written by David Michelini, right, who was the guy who was writing Iron Man at that time. For whatever reason, he couldn't write the next several issues, right? Mm -hmm. 
the guy who wrote the issue that you're talking about was Bill Matlow, you know. Yeah. And I remember that story. That story was they were coming back from some other mission, and they were going through Soviet uh, airspace, and the whole thing was like there were some monsters or whatever, and they're like, oh man, we can't cross Soviet airspace. It's gonna be World War Three, you know, you know, because it's still the '80s, it's the Cold War, and so on and so forth. And they were going back and forth about should they go in there or should they not go in there? Is it gonna cause problems? Is it gonna not cause problems? And that panel you're talking about, he's, you know, Sam is like, yeah, I've been keeping my mouth shut to see, you know, if they were gonna ask my opinion. But I guess nobody thought to consult a token, you know, like like you just said, you know, and blah 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 blah. The story went on. After that, David Michelini comes back, starts writing the comic. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, okay. Some weird things going on with my uh, computer here. Okay. Anyway, David Michelini, the original writer, comes back. His first thing to do is he takes the he takes the Falcon out, you know because they have blah, 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 got their A1 priority security clearance and all that stuff back in order, and David, I'm sorry, and Peter Gyrix is going away, yakety, schmackety, schmackety. Somebody actually, a few months later, wrote a letter in and saying, you know, you know, what happened to the Falcon, you know? And he actually wrote a pretty direct, you know, response saying, oh, I was gonna do this story where, you know, the Falcon comes in and a couple of the Avengers don't like him because the government made him part of the team, you know, because the government stepped in, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then they were all going to come together and, and fight together and la di da And he goes, because I wasn't able to write, you know, issue four, five, six, and seven or whatever, and somebody else filled in, you know, it didn't make sense to all of a sudden do that story since, you know, you know, the other writer didn't, you know, didn't do it, so I just, you know, elected to have him move on and do, you know, the next thing. But that's that's where that came from. But no, I, I totally, I totally, uh, I totally know what you're saying. I totally understand it because they basically brought the character in there, and he essentially did nothing. He, by default, actually became the token, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did. He like, like you said, John Byrne would draw him fly through a few panels and that was it you know he was never a decisive member in battle he uh didn't uh come up with any plans he didn't have any sort of like drama or you know any of the characterization that some of the other characters had basically and, his only job was to be black right right and even though the, the you know the first writer went to kind of like address that and make that a storyline it ended up being he actually was the token. He actually was kind of like they took a character that could have been interesting and stuff, and basically essentially wasted them. So yeah, that's that's a, I, that's so that was, was unfortunate. I think in recent days, uh, a lot of people like the Falcon now because, and I'm going to put this on Jeff Johns, or I'll give him that credit. Like, I don't know if you ever read that storyline from a couple of years ago. Well, I think it was the when Jeff Johns was, it was more than a couple of years ago, now that I think about it. It was like early 2000s, 2001, 2002. I don't know if you read any of those stories where Jeff Johns was writing The Avengers. Um, you read those? Uh, stories you know, of Jeff Johns like from Marvel? Yeah. He only did like two or three arcs, and then he went back to like D.C., but basically, Jeff Johns reinstated the Falcon, right? They did one, you know, okay story, blah, 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 blah. He didn't do anything too outstanding, but he doesn't, you know, a useless person anyway, either. But he was, he did, you know, uh, you know, voice his opinions. He was part of the decision-making process, you know. Then they did that story called uh, Red Zone or some, something like that were at the climax of the story, where basically the story was, long story short, the Red Skull is going to poison America, blah, 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 blah. Long story short, the climax of that story is Captain America is unconscious and dying. Tony Stark Iron Man is in the same room. He's got his helmet off trying to, like, give Cap, you know, artificial respiration or whatever. The people who save the day are the Black Panther and... 
the Falcon. Basically, uh, I think the Skull's got the Falcon tied up, but the Falcon's able to use his powers or whatever to call every, like, hawk and bird or whatever in to crash in to do this and do that and, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then the Black Panther uh, breaks the Red Skull's jaw, you know. So, you know what I mean? The character got that cool moment, you know, uh, that, you know, he didn't get for however many years, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I remember, like, talking to a friend of mine, like, you know, way, way, you know, back when it came out, you know, we're talking about, ha, you know, finally, you know, they let the brothers save the day in the Avengers, you know, you know, so. But I think that's why a lot of people have come around to kind of liking the character a little bit more. I haven't been keeping up to with what's going on in like the uh, uh, with Captain America recently, you know. But I think you know now they've been portraying the character as being a little bit more proactive and you know not just you know Mister Sidekick type of thing. So I think that's why people have kind of like caught in, you know, kind of got on, kind of been getting into the Falcon recently, you know. Well, that's cool. That's cool because you know for the longest period of time. I basically saw the Falcon as basically being a grown-up version of the um, um, the, the live TV show version of um, Robin on Batman. Right. right. You know, oh, his, his but, basic thing was just to how was Cap going to save him this issue? <laughs> That's how we thought when we were kids. Back when we were kids, you know, he he very much had you know sidekick itis. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Um. Well, I think I'm gonna. We can continue to. We can continue our talk, but I think I'm gonna um, um, probably cut the recording off at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you gotta, you gotta give a sign out now. Oh, give a sign out. Yeah. Well, this has been um, Phil and. And my name's Ed. And until next time, night out. There you go. Ha <laughs> ha.